Hello, I'm John McNamara, the Information Architect for IBM Messaging, and I'm here today with Ben Mann. Hello, Ben. Hey. Hey, John. Hello, everybody. Uh, Nick Downs. Hi, Hi guys. How you doing? Hello, everybody. And Nick O'Leary. Hey, Nick. Hi there. Hi, guys. And today we're going to talk about the Internet of Things. Um, so, Ben, do you want to give us a quick run through an overview of what the Internet of Things actually is? Yeah, absolutely, John. So, I mean, the Internet of Things is really about connected devices that are capturing data from the world around us. Some people estimate that uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there's about, uh, what, 7 billion people on the planet, and there's about 11 billion connected devices. And the estimates are that that's going to grow uh, very rapidly. So they reckon that in the next few years, there'll be three times as many internet-connected devices controlling the world and sensing things around us. So what we're really excited about is what you can do when you can get data from those devices and use it to change the way we do things. Awesome. So how is it going to how's it going to change our lives? How will the Internet of Things uh, change your lives day to day? That's a great question, John. I, mean, I suppose um, some of the ways that will change our lives is is um, being able to control things remotely. So think about you know you've left your car um, unlocked and you realise this, or you've lost your keys and you can use your phone to unlock it, or maybe you uh, leave the uh, leave the uh, the iron the iron on or the oven on or something. Being able to switch that off remotely is one example. But also, people are really interested in being able to optimize um, the delivery of things. So imagine a, a delivery truck that's that's smart. It's able to know, um, you know, when we, when people are in, when people are out, um, and also um, things like uh, smart street lighting. Um, so being able to light certain areas and switch lights off when there's no one no one around. And then the, and then we're seeing how it's starting to change the way we buy things. Um, so you know, not just buying car insurance based on you know a, a year's policy. But, but paying based on when you drive, where you drive, and how you drive are some of the ways, some of the things that we're beginning to see. So we're really expecting these devices to really change the world, way we interact with the world and the way we get data from it. That's a beautiful overview, buddy. Um, so what's IBM's focus on this? What, um, uh, how is IBM focusing on the Internet of Things? Well, I suppose there's a few areas. When one is focusing on connecting to those devices, there's, there's many different devices out there. There's no particular standards. So being able to get data from devices. And obviously, we mentioned there's so many devices out there, you've got to do it at scale. Um, so you've got to be able to you know, collect that data and bring it in and be able to analyze it. Um, the other challenge, of course, is uh, being able to um, understand what's happening um, with, those, with those sensors. So being able to analyze the data in real time is a real challenge. Um, and then, obviously, then being able to control the devices. So when you've decided you're going to do something with those devices, how do you create the logic that says, okay, now we've we've detected something, this is how we're going to respond. And really, you know, you want to be able to do that without having to write loads and loads of code um, that's, that might be difficult to change later. Awesome. So it sounds like we've got massive scale connectivity with things like Metasite. We've got applying real-time analytics. Uh, we've got the Internet of Things cloud. And um, we've got the connectivity to wire all these devices together. Absolutely, yeah. And as you said, we've just um, recently had a statement of direction about this Internet of Things cloud, where we put all this stuff together, put it in an as a service offering, and make it really easy to do. But the, one of the key problems we've had is, as you said, is wiring these devices. How do you, how do we how do we create that logic and, and make it dynamic? Awesome. So I'm going to introduce Nick O'Leary here, who's. Uh, who's played an, an, an immense part in helping to wire all these things together. Uh, Nick, can you introduce us to the concept and the function of something mysteriously called Node-RED? <laughs> sure. So I work in the Emerging Technologies team here in IBM Hursley, and uh, the sorts of projects we do are typically sort of very agile, rapid, needing to wire things together, get different devices talking to each other quickly. So um, through that, we've built this tool called Node-RED. It's a Node.js application that is, it provides a visual environment for wiring together different sorts of inputs and outputs and being able to put logic in between. So it's uh, uh, this, um, this tool in our tool bag that makes it really easy for us to, um, you know, say it's take temperature data off a temperature sensor apply some logic, some banding to it, and fire off an alert, whether that's to Twitter or, or an email or whatever it might be. So how did it come about? It, it came about through necessity, really, um, because so many of our projects, we would be spending time just dealing with plumbing. How do I talk to a device? Um, you know, how do I 
um, get data off a serial connection, how do I connect MQTT? None of those are the problems we want to be solving. We want to be solving the, um, uh, the business problem of the temperatures hit a certain threshold, I need to fire off an alert. So it came about because we needed, we wanted a way to be able to rapidly produce these sort of event-driven event situational applications. So if you were to define the problem that Node-RED addresses, what would it be in a, in a kind of a single sentence? It, uh, a single sentence is, uh, as a visual wiring tool for the Internet of Things, it just makes it easy to wire events together. That sounds awesome. So you mentioned it's based on something called Node.js. So could you give us a brief intro into what Node.js is, why it's important, and why you've based Node.red on it? So Node.js is a server-side JavaScript runtime. It um, built on top of the uh, V8 engine with, produced by Google. Um, so it's a uh, JavaScript environment for the server, so it means uh, developers who are used to developing in the browser can also develop server-side functionality. Uh, and we built it. We built Node-RED on top of Node.js, um, partly as a, uh, a function of wanting to learn about Node.js, because here in the Emerging Technologies team, one thing we need to do is to stay very current with new technologies. And Node.js is very much uh, one of those, you know, uh, new runtimes that it's been around for a little while, but you know, wanting to find a reason to really dig into and understand it as an environment. But for us, for the tool itself, it it's a um, very easy environment to develop in. It comes with a huge ecosystem of third-party modules that can already talk to various different uh, variety of different uh, systems technologies. So it's very easy for us to um, exploit that ecosystem and add in capabilities into Node-RED that already exist, that third parties have already written code to enable Node.js to talk to other systems. So how would I get my hands on it? How would I start playing with it? So Node-RED is an open source project. It's up on GitHub. Uh, anyone can go to nodered.org and find all the links there. Um, we are developing it in the open. It's uh, Apache licensed. Uh, we accept pull requests. We, there's a Google group for feedback. Um, I'm on IRC uh, most of the time, but all the links are on our website, nodered.org. Uh, and you know, we welcome people playing with it, feedback, issues, whatever. We're, we're developing this very much in the open. Awesome. And now, do you have any future plans for it? Absolutely. Um, I've, what we've put out is, uh, you yeah, know, We've got, the, we've got the tool to the point where it's good for us, it's working for us, um, and it's got the right set of features for us, but we recognize there's a huge possibility. Um, Internet of Things, uh, educational uses, a huge variety of scenarios that could be used. And you know, we're not really in the position to build in all that capability ourselves. So um, part of the plans are around broadening the palette of nodes that we ship by default. Um, but also trying to encourage others to um, write their own nodes and contribute them back. Uh, then there's things around, um, you know, evolving the tool, making it more capable. Uh, you know, we, we're trying to be careful. We, we, one of the um, strengths of the tool is it, it's easy for people without, you know, great programming skills and great experience to do something. And we don't want to burden the tool with so much sort of technical capability that um, it loses that appeal for so educational use, that type of thing. So it's, um, you know, there's a fine balance to be struck, and we're being careful with what we throw in there, but, um, you know, we, there's, there's a lot still to do. Fair play, but, you know, you mentioned this collaboration between other users as well to contribute. And I know we've got Thingmonk coming up. Um, could you give us an indication, maybe, Ben, as to uh, when it is and what we're going to be doing there? That's a great question, John. Um, I know it's coming up pretty soon. What, we're in October now. It's uh, it's in middle of November, I believe. Yeah, uh, third of December. Ben. Yeah, third of December. December. <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me just talk on that one because I'm actually speaking at ThingMonk. Um, so ThingMonk is a conference organised by RedMonk, James Governor and Co, who do Monkey Gra, Monktoberfest, and other great developer-oriented events. So. Um, 
It's a Internet of Things conference. It's got a great raft of speakers. Other than, yeah, well, yeah. I'm honoured to be uh, speaking with a great <laughs> range of others. Um, people like Ian Skerritt from the Eclipse Foundation, Matt Webb from Berg, uh, Rick Bellotta from ThingWorks, Andy Piper, a uh, you know, former colleague of ours, good friend, a um, whole bunch of people talking around Internet of Things. Um, and there's a real mix of sort of industry, uh, developer, uh, all the different sorts of communities. And I think the, the, the events, they're looking at you know, how can they learn from each other, how can they collaborate, um, all that good stuff. So I'm there talking primarily about uh, Node-RED, but you know, really thinking about what's the developer experience for the Internet of Things. You know, um, how can we make it easier for developers to do stuff? That sounds phenomenal. So, um, if anyone wants to contact you, is there a, a Twitter ID they could uh, they could ping you at? Sure. Uh, well, for Node Red, at Node Red will will find us, and uh, you you can find us off that. Wonderful. And there's also at IBM messaging as well. So feel free to uh, to ping them as well, gents. Um, before you sign off, is there anything else? No, nope, nope. that's all we've got to add. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> okay, folks, well, thank you so much for taking part, and take care. Bye-bye. Cheers. Yeah, right, Cheers. Bye, guys.